Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Brown. I'm a board certified dermatologist and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to cover the most common lasers out there and do you need to be doing those? If you feel like you're so overwhelmed by which laser is the best, which one's the best for you? Is it going to really do what it's supposed to do, what it claims to do? Is that bang worth your buck? Stick around. We're going to go through the most popular lasers on the market. What do they do and do you need to be doing it? Before we get into this, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you like this video for more Dermaprove tips. And when we talk about lasers, I often get patients thinking that just because something is a laser has a lot of downtime. That's really not the case because some of the lasers we're going to talk about are lasers that target just redness. My favorite laser is Pulse Style Laser. It only targets redness. It does a fantastic job at targeting the blood vessels and those capillaries, especially in your face. But it doesn't really have a lot of downtime. There's definitely no blisters. There's no peeling. None of that. So you need to understand just because something is a laser doesn't mean it's going to have a ton of downtime. Second thing you need to understand is that not every laser is going to perform the same in different hands. If you have an esthetician or typically a nurse doing this, neither will they be very comfortable going higher with the settings. You can have that same laser in the hands of a physician, like a board certified dermatologist or plastic surgeon. You can have very different results. Your results are not really dependent on just the type of laser. They're also depending on who's doing the laser. When we talk about lasers, I want to make sure one thing is clear. IPL or BBL stands for intense pulse light or broadband light. That will not be discussed here. IPL and BBL are not true lasers. It is a broadband light with a filter that is intended to mimic the laser. IPLs are great devices. We have one in my clinic. I also call it a jack of all trades. It does a little bit browns. It does a little bit reds, but it's not really great at anything. It's a great beginner device, but it will not be covered today. Now let's get into the actual lasers. The lasers are not just for browns or for reds. Uh, they can be for brown spots, they can be for red spots, but they can also be for tattoo removal or they can be used to help stimulate collagen production to help improve uh, the fine lines, the wrinkles, to tighten uh, loose black skin or even improve the crepey skin. There's a variety of uses for lasers and they all do different things depending on what their chromophore or their target is. So we're going to get into what each laser targets, how's that benefiting you, what's the downtime, what skin type is it ideal for and things like that. But first let's get some terminology down. There's ablative and non-ablative lasers. Ablative lasers, as it says ablative means it removes something. They remove the outermost layer of the skin. These are going to have the most downtime. They produce a lot of heat. Uh, so they heat up the deeper dermis to help stimulate collagen production and stimulate elastin production. So while ablative lasers will probably typically give you the best results, they're the most aggressive. They have the most downtime and they have the higher risk of side effects like hyperpigmentation, infection, and things like that. These are typically done by physicians and not done by general estheticians. Some of the examples of ablative lasers are things like CO2 and erbium YAG lasers. The next category are the non-ablative lasers. These leave the surface of the skin intact. They work by delivering that same heat deeper in the dermis into the second layer of the skin, but without disrupting the top layer. So they're gonna have a little bit less downtime they are typically less intense because of this. They have shorter recovery. Uh, they also tend to be safer for darker skin types because there's less heat and less ablation, but results are a little more subtle, so it requires multiple treatments to get the same result that you would from, let's say, an ablative laser. Some of the examples here are things like Fraxel, Frax, NDYAG, Pico A. And another thing we need to understand is fractional versus fully ablative lasers. So for example, CO2 we just talked about can be fully ablative, meaning the laser beam comes out and it destroys all the skin in that laser beam. However, most of the time to help minimize the downtime and improve the speeding recovery, the recovery at which skin heals in between your treatments, now, we use actual fractionated laser. Fractionated is a little bit different from fully ablative. So if that laser beam comes down, it is going to destroy tissue in the little fractions, almost like little columns heat. These fractional lasers can be both ablative and non-ablative, as we already talked about, but the difference is they only treat a fraction of a skin at a time. So around each one of those individual laser beams, if you will, there remains some intact skin, which is gonna help skin healing and it will reduce risk of infection and hyperpigmentation. Uh, think of it almost like a pixelated approach to rejuvenation, if you will. All right, now we got the terminology down. Let's get into the lasers that I recommend. And one quick reminder about this, prices are gonna vary depending on where you live, uh, who your provider is, how advanced the device is. So I always recommend choosing either board certified dermatologist, a plastic surgeon, or somebody with extensive experience in lasers prior to signing up for one of these. 
because as I said earlier, the, the result that you will have from the laser treatment is going to be dependent not just on the type of laser that you did, but also on who did the laser. So somebody who's more experienced, you are more likely to have better results because they will probably go higher up on the setting. And also you'll probably have a little bit better healing because they've done this many times and they'll have a lot of tips to help you with it. So let's start with my favorite pool style laser. Pool style laser does amazing for redness and I'm talking about capillaries on your face. I love it for rosacea as somebody who suffers with rosacea. I've had it done many, many times. Most of my patients for rosacea coming pretty red. They have a lot of broken capillaries and I recommend three treatments, one treatment every month for three months. After the first treatment, I typically say one will see about 20% improvement. It takes about two treatments to see 40 to 60% improvement and it takes three treatments to see 60 to 80% improvement. After the third treatment, my patients come in about once every year or even every two years. It just depends on their genetics, their risk factors, how often they flare, do they wear sunscreen every day. So if you're somebody who wears sunscreen and you have rosacea and you don't flare a lot, you might be doing pulse style laser once a year. If you're somebody who works outside, you don't wear sunscreen, you're perimenopausal and you flush a lot, and you're going to end up with more broken capillaries on your face, you might need this treatment a couple times a year. It really, really depends on genetics and environmental factors and trigger factors. This laser is best for those who have rosacea, post-inflammatory erythema from acne marks and such, or any surgical scars, or I've even used it for bruising from filler. Downtime is not bad. If you swell, you're going to be swollen for two to three days. If you bruise, you may be bruised for maybe five or seven days. Everyone's a little bit different. The results are fantastic. Most of my patients do really, really well with just two treatments spaced one month apart. Sometimes I'll do the third treatment and then everyone does maintenance. The maintenance for the lasers once a year, but the maintenance at home is your vitamin C or antioxidant serum every morning and sunscreen every single morning. Why do I love it? This is my favorite laser by far. It's one of the ones we've had in a practice for seven or eight years now. It helps with redness. It helps with rosacea. It is incredibly effective, way, way, way more effective than IPL or BBL for redness. And I've seen it make a huge difference in any patient with a vascular concern. So you can also treat those little cherry angiomas, the little red moles that you get on your body. And that's typically just one treatment. The next laser I want to talk about is Frax. We do have this in clinic. This is 1550 nanometer fractionated non-ablative laser. The the target for this laser, unlike PDL that we talked about that targets redness, Frax targets collagen. The target is water, so it's going to go deeper into the skin. It's not going to blade that top layer of the skin, but it will use fractionated energy to stimulate collagen production. It helps improve texture, fine lines, some mild scarring without removing that surface layer of the skin. So I find it to be best for those who've maybe tried microneedling for acne scarring and they want next step up, those in their 30s or 40s that want a little bit better results than microneedling link, but they're not quite ready for the downtime of the CO2. If you have any rough texture, fine lines, any early signs of photo aging, and it's really good for maintenance in between CO2 treatments. So if you're someone who's done a big CO2, had a lot of downtime, and now you'll look good, but you're just not quite ready for that downtime again, Frax might be a good one. The downtime is not bad. You'll look like you got a sunburn afterwards. Uh, skin feels like almost like fine sandpaper, and then it kind of flakes off over the course of three to five days. It's safe for most skin types, one through three, even though Fitzpatrick skin type 4 you can treat, you just have to be very, very careful. If I treat anyone with skin type 4, which is a little bit darker skin type, I typically pre-treat with hydroquinone, and I've done this with CO2 and the Frax laser, so it can be done. You just need to have experienced uh, laser technician or a physician. Why I like this laser, we have the Frax, which is not to be confused with Fraxol. Fraxol is different, I'll talk about it in just a minute. Um, they're just a different brand, a little bit different wavelength. This is a really good option for patients who want some improvement, but they're not quite ready for the recovery that the CO2 requires. Now, keep in mind that I always say this, lasers that have less downtime, they tend to be less expensive and have less impressive results and you need more treatments. This is Frax for you. You're going to need more treatments, less downtime, and results are less impressive unless you do series versus the CO2, which we'll talk about in a little bit, that has a um, little bit more downtime, quite a bit more downtime actually. It's more expensive, but the results are a little more impressive. Now let's talk about Fraxol Dual. This is probably, I'd say, the most popular laser right now. Um, it's been around for a long time. It does have 
have dual wavelengths, so 1550 and 1927. This is one of the really well-known, it's known by its brand. Uh, it's also a fractional laser. It uses both of these wavelengths to treat both pigment and collagen loss. So your 1927 wavelength is going to target the superficial pigment, but the 1550 is going to be similar to Frax. It's going to go deeper for that texture and fine line improvement. Uh, Fraxel is best for that sun damage, discoloration, fine lines, maybe even large pores, as well as acne scarring. The downtime is probably four to seven days. There's some redness, swelling, and flaking similar to Frax. It's safe for Fitzpatrick skin types one through three, uh, just like Frax, but um, you can use it on type four. You just have to be very, very careful, and I would recommend pre-treating with hydroquinone. Now, I don't have this laser in my clinic, but I talk about it a lot because it's very popular, and I've had patients who've had it done with success, but I've also had patients who've had it done elsewhere and weren't quite happy with it. It's, it's one of those strong middle ground options for patients who want some sort of resurfacing type of result, but they don't want the downtime of the CO2. So maybe if you're in your late 30s or 50s and you want some smoother, brighter skin, it's one of the most reliable lasers on the market. Now let's talk about Pico Way and Pico Sure lasers. These are Pico Second lasers. So the Pico lasers use these super short energy pulses. It's, it's not heat to shatter the pigment and stimulate collagen production. So this makes them one of the safest options for darker skin tones, but also for melasma. This is ideal if you have melasma, if you have any post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, or if you have some early signs of aging that you're trying to take care of. The downtime is not too bad, usually just some mild redness, maybe some flaking in the first week, but it's really not bad. By day seven, you have no downtime. It's safe for all skin tones, going all the way up through like even skin type six. And while I don't have this laser in my clinic, I get a question about treating melasma with lasers every single day. And I would love to have this. It's on my wish list. But this is something that I recommend for my patients who have melasma and they really want laser done. Now, I think it's important to know that once you have Pico laser done for your melasma, you didn't cure yourself of melasma. You didn't fix it. And it's going to come back. Ah, I'm going to say 99.99% of the time because nothing in medicine is 100, but your melasma is going to come back. It's coming from within. You're predisposed to it. Melasma is a result of chronic sun, genetics, birth control, pregnancies, all of the above. And even if you have laser done and it looks like your melasma is gone, if you're not doing your maintenance, your melasma is going to come back. It just is. So most of the time for melasma, I still recommend doing your topicals, doing even your oral tranexamic acid. And for those who really, really want laser, I, I refer them to uh, have a Pico laser done elsewhere. So lasers can be a game changer, but only when they're used correctly, in the right hands, on the right skin type, and for the right purpose. So don't be swayed by this marketing hype or influencer trends. And the most effective anti-aging plan is personalized to you, your skin type. It's really realistic as far as how many things are actually going to put on your face, how much is it going to cost. So if you're not sure where to start, consult with your board certified dermatologist who has experience with multiple lasers, not just one machine. And don't forget, skincare is your best defense against anti-aging. Lasers are optional and only if the result that you're going to get from the laser is worth the money that you're paying to have it done. And the downtime is something that's doable to you. If not, please don't be forced or don't feel like you're missing out and have FOMO from people who are doing lasers. I've done them. They're fine, but you can certainly go without the lasers. Skincare is where it's at. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Dr. Alexandra Brown. Thank you guys so much for watching this. If you have other lasers that you want me to mention, maybe I didn't mention them, or have questions about lasers, drop them down below. I'd love to answer those for you. Thank you for watching. See you next time.